Hello everyone. In this lecture, we are going to talk about sterilization. We will start with the definition of sterilization and then we'll gradually proceed towards understanding the different types of sterilization methods, primarily the physical sterilization and the chemical sterilization. So let's start. First, we should understand that what exactly sterilization means. So if I have to tell you in one sentence, then sterilization is the complete removal of microorganisms from any object or surface. So when you completely remove all the microbial growth from any surface or thing or solution, that is known as the sterilization method. And sterilization is obtained when the microorganisms are subjected to antimicrobial agents for sufficient time at optimum conditions. As we proceed in this presentation, we are going to see that there are different types of sterilization and all these methods involve certain time period and certain uh, sort of exposure to any kind of treatment for the sterilization to take place. So we will be discussing about those things. Now the sterilization methods, they are basically of two types. So one is known as the physical methods of sterilization and the second one is known as the chemical method of sterilization. As the name itself is suggesting, the physical method means that there will be some physical entities involved in the sterilization process. Whereas on the other hand, the chemical sterilization method means that some chemicals are involved. So first we will quickly see that what are the different subtypes in the physical methods. So when we talk about the sterilization, that is the complete removal of the microorganisms from any substance, an object or a surface, if we are talking about the physical method, then there are further three types of physical methods. So the first one is heat, second one is radiation, and the third one is filtration. Heat means that we are using heat for the removal of microorganism from the object the second is radiation, which means that we are using the radiations. And filtration means we are using some sort of filtration by which we are removing the microorganisms from the specific solution or something else as well. Now, if we talk about the heat method, then heat method is also of two types. One is the dry heat method and the second one is the moist heat method. If we talk about the dry heat method, it means that there is no involvement of water. On the other hand side, if when we are talking about the moist heat, it means that the water is present in this. And we will be talking about all these subtypes in the coming slides. On uh, When we talk about radiations, then the radiations are of two types, non-ionizing and ionizing. And under what conditions we use the radiation method and what criteria needs to be there so we are where we are choosing the radiation method over the heat method or maybe the heat method over the radiation method so it all depends on the kind of object that we are trying to sterilize so that is what we have to discuss in the coming slides and third one is filtration and these are the different types of the filtration techniques and uh, the second category of sterilization is the chemical sterilization and chemical sterilization is further of two types, gaseous sterilization and the liquid sterilization. Gaseous sterilization means that we are using gases and liquid sterilization means that we are using some sort of liquid chemicals for the process. Now, in terms of gaseous sterilization, uh, the, different chem uh, the different gases that are used are the ethylene oxide, formaldehyde, nitrogen dioxide and ozone. And the commonly used liquid sterilizing agents are hydrogen peroxide, glutaraldehyde, and hypochlorite. And you might have heard some of them uh, in some areas of your practical classes. Now let's discuss in detail the physical methods of sterilization under which the first category was the heat method. Now the heat method is involving either the dry heat or the moist heat. The name itself suggests that the dry heat is involving is not involving water while the moist heat is involving the water. So talking about the dry heat method, there are different subtypes that come under it where there is no involvement of water, but there is a direct heat utilization for the sterilization of the object. So the first one is the red heat. 
so red heat is basically the method where uh, we are sterilizing the inoculating wires the points of the forceps or the searing spatulas in the practical classes or uh, uh, if we are doing some microbiology uh, experiments where you have to deal with the microorganisms so you need to use the inoculating wires or maybe you need to pick up the tissue uh, of the plant to culture it on a media then you might have to just um, uh, sterilize your forceps before you pick up the explant to avoid any kind of contamination. So uh, these kind of uh, objects can be sterilized by using the red heat. Now what is exactly the mechanism of this specific method? So what you have to do, you have to take the object that you want to sterilize, in this case uh, the inoculating loop. So you place it on the burner, on the flame, and you wait until it becomes red hot. So Sterilization is done by holding the object in the flame of a Bunsen burner until they are seen to be red hot. So this ensures that all the microorganisms that are present on that specific object are killed. Next is the flaming method. So flaming method is used for the sterilization of scalpels, needles, mouth of the culture tube, slides and cover slips. Uh, have you ever uh, done the fixing of a slide after you have uh, done an inoculation of a microorganism on it? So what do you do? So you fix the, you make a smear of the bacteria or any microorganism on the glass slide and then you try to pass it through the flame a few number of times in order to fix it. So, so that is something like that. The flaming method involves a criteria like that. So in this method, you pass the article through the Bunsen flame a few number of times without allowing it to become red hot. So you are not trying to place the object directly into the flame steady, but you are rather moving that object a little bit in order to sterilize it. So the commonly used um, object for the sterilization by this method involves the needles and the culture tubes. The third category is incineration. Now, incineration is done in a specific instrument called the incinerator. And this is an excellent method for the destruction of materials such as contaminated clothes. Uh, for example, from the hospitals, there are a lot of clothes which needs to be destroyed. So those are done in an incinerator. Also, the cotton wool stoppers are animal tie cases or the pathological materials which you cannot dump anywhere. So you try to discard it, you try to destroy it fully completely so that no trace of it is left behind. So that can be done in incineration technique. So it involves burning of the materials. The next one is hot air oven. Now hot air oven is basically involving extremely high temperature air circulated inside it and due to the contact with that hot air whatever the objects you have placed inside the hot air oven they are sterilized which means that all the microorganisms present on that object will be killed so the commonly used um, objects for the sterilization process using the hot air oven include dry glassware such as the test tubes petri dishes flasks pipettes and instruments such as forceps scalpels and scissors. Now, you cannot place anything that can be directly affected by the heat. For example, plastic. You cannot place it inside the hot air oven for its sterilization. Why? Because it's extremely hot temperature can lead to the melting of the plastic in it. So you need to make sure that you are uh, using the objects which are heat resistant in the hot air oven. Now, uh, what is the principle of this hot air oven? This hot air oven has a turbo blower inside it that assists in the circulation of air and to ensure the rapid uniform heating of the load. So the rapid and uniform air circulation that happens inside this instrument leads to the sterilization of the object completely. Now talking about the other category is the moist heat method. Moist heat method means that water involvement is there. Now under this category, there are three different subtypes. And this includes the temperature where less than 100 degrees Celsius temperature is used. One is at 100 degrees Celsius and the third one is above 100 degrees Celsius. Now the temperature below 100 degrees Celsius, this technique is known as pasteurization. The temperature at 100 degrees Celsius is known as the boiling. Temperature above 100 degrees Celsius is known as the autoclaving. 
So these are the sterilization methods and all these methods are used in different circumstances uh, according to the need of the object. Now, what exactly is the principle by which this moist heat is able to kill the microorganisms inside the object or a solution and completely sterilize it is that the moist heat, it is responsible for killing the microorganisms by the coagulation of proteins, specifically what we call as denaturation. So when the microorganisms present in that specific object, which we are trying to sterilize, if that uh, the uh, microorganisms present on it, they get exposed to the high temperature, what happens is that the proteins present in them, they start to denature. And due to this denaturation, what happens, their um, metabolic processes, they stop and ultimately the microorganisms die. So how the denaturation of the protein is done? Due to the high temperature, there is a breakage of the hydrogen bonds that are holding the proteins in their three-dimensional active conformation. So this is uh, just a sum up of whatever we have studied so far. And we were talking about the moist heat. So uh, the 100 degrees Celsius temperature is known as the boiling. And we usually use it for the sterilization of dishes and basins. So this kind of uh, boiling technique is responsible for killing the vegetative, bacterial, and fungal pathogens. But this is not effective on endospores. If we want to kill the endospores, then we have to use temperature above 100 degrees Celsius. And that technique is known as autoclaving. And autoclaving, as we just discussed, that there is a protein denaturation that happens in it. And this is a very effective method of sterilization. And this can also lead to the killing of endospores. And that too in about 15 minutes of exposure. And the temperature that is less than 100 degrees Celsius, that involves pasteurization. And this technique is specifically used for the milk and cream products. Talking about the autoclave, which is one of the very important uh, components of moist heat, which we just discussed. So in autoclave, uh, there is a temperature utilization of 100, 121 degrees Celsius. And the pressure that is used is 15 PSI. And the exposure is done for 15 minutes. And this autoclaving can lead to the killing of the endospores as well. So autoclaving method is uh, very useful in the sterilization of culture medias. If you have to uh, do the microbial analysis or you have to do the uh, plant tissue culture for those kind of things, you need to make media. So uh, in order to make sure that your culture is growing uh, nicely and without any contamination, you need to make sure that your media is not contaminated prior to the culturing. So you ensure its sterilization by using the autoclaving method. And this is a very widely used technique. And you can also um, autoclave dressings, applicators, several solutions which you want to be contamination free. So several pharmaceutical products also. So this is what uh, an autoclave looks like. And you just place your uh, objects inside or, or the solutions inside this and then uh, you wait for the temperature to rise and the pressure to rise and wait for 15 minutes and uh, finally the whistle blows and your sterilization process is done. So this basically acts like a pressure cooker only, the um, utensil that we usually use at our households as well. So the procedure and the principle is almost same. Talking about the second category of sterilization under the physical method is the radiation. So radiation is employed for the heat sensitive materials. For the materials which we cannot sterilize by using the heat method, we prefer using the radiation method over it. And one of the most important examples is the plastic products because they cannot withstand moisture or heat. Now, radiation is of two types, non-ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation. Under non-ionizing radiation, there is infrared and UV. And under the ionizing radiation, there is X-rays and gamma rays. So the radiations are specifically responsible for damaging the DNA or destroying the DNA and ultimately killing off the microorganism. So for the infrared radiation, which is a type of the non-ionizing radiation, this kills the microorganisms due to the generation of heat. And uh, this is used for syringes and catheter sterilization, which, which are the pre-packed items. 
talking about the ultraviolet radiation, uh, this has a very limited ability to penetrate. So it is used for uh, the surface sterilization, sort of when you want to kill the microorganisms which are present on the surface of an object. So this is an excellent technique in those cases. And uh, this is used to sterilize the operation theaters, laboratories, and entryways. You might have seen certain UV lamps inside the laboratories or maybe in some operation theaters. So those are basically switched on before you start to work in that specific area. And uh, the this UV light is responsible for killing any kind of microorganisms which might be present on the uh, surface of the uh, shells or maybe um, the instruments or the solutions and all that. Uh, the next is the ionizing radiation, and these involve X-rays, gamma rays, and cosmic rays. So they directly damage the DNA and hence lead to the killing of the microorganisms. The, and this is an excellent way of sterilization. And uh, how do they do that? They destroy the bacterial endospores and the vegetative cells. The third category is the filtration. So filtration basically means when you're removing the microorganisms from any solution or the air. Now, this is very effective and it is an economical method. And this can be used for the heat sensitive fluids. So for the heat sensitive fluids, you cannot use the heat method. You cannot use the UV radiations or any other types of radiation. So you need to rely on another type of sterilization method, and that is filtration. And filtration method can also be used to sterilize the air if we want to work in sterile air, such as the laminar airflow, which we'll, we will discuss in the next slide. So uh, membrane filtration is one of the examples of filtration. So what we do, basically, we have a membrane and we pour the solution over it, which we want to sterilize. And this membrane retains the microbes over it. And it uh, and uh, the remaining fluid, it sieves through it and it is sterile. So the bacteria, it is not able to pass through the membrane because the size of the membrane pores is small enough so that the bacteria is not able to pass. So that is basically the procedure of this technique. And these filters, they remove the microorganisms by screening them out, such as the sieve separates large sand particles from the small ones. And this membrane can be made up of cellulose acetate, cellulose nitrate, polycarbonate, polyvinylidene fluoride, or other synthetic porous materials. And now comes the important example of uh, the instrument that uses the filtration method. This is the laminar airflow. This is one of the very important instruments that is used in the laboratories for the microbial analysis or any kind of other analysis where you need to make sure that you're working in a sterile environment. So how does this work? Um, this is what a laminar airflow looks like, but if I have to make a diagram of it, this is how it looks like. So what it does, uh, it has HEPA filters attached here at this area, there are HEPA filters attached. Now HEPA stands for high efficiency particulate air, which means that a sterile air will be filtered and this area where we are working will have the sterile air present. So the air enters from here and these HIPAA filters filter that air and remove all sorts of contaminants and microorganisms from it and filters out a clean air that is circulated in the hood. And now we can work in this hood where there is clean air available. So those were the different types of sterilization methods. I hope you liked the lecture. Stay curious and I'll see you in the next lecture. Thank you.